I mean, there's no question whatsoever. Grayson, like, yes, theoretically, Trey Young, after Grayson Allen puts the entire weight of his body after hooking him on his shooting arm, he could have walked away instead of pushing Grayson Allen away. But Grayson then did what, of course, he does, which is escalate and then throw his hands up. Like, wait, me? You're, you're mad at me? Let me hook the guy. Let me lean on the guy. Then when the guy pushes me away, I'm, let me throw my shoulder into his midsection. Then me? You're mad at me? Is, is little old me? I, listen, I lost, I lost a bet because I set the over-under on two and a half regular season games before Grace Allen did some of this nonsense. He didn't even make it to summer league games before he got into this nonsense. Listen, Grayson not playing very well, as a lot of the young guys in Summer League. We're all focused on Trey Young, who's had a poor shooting percentage in Summer League. Grayson shooting 20% in Summer League. It'd been tough. It's tough for all these young guys, except for big men, essentially, in Summer League. And he went back to what he knows best. I mean, I, I, it doesn't surprise me. No, no, no. You can't, you can't be surprised. And to your comments, Jenna, you are what you do. This is, basketball is not a game that you have to transform yourself because of this physical competition <laughs> that you have to do before the game. Now, the NFL, let me tell you something. The guy who walks across the chalk and the white lines and compared to the guy who might pick up his, 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 um, his kids his, after the- his kids or a significant other after the game, those are two different cats. You have to do that in the NFL. And the Famously, NBA, John Henderson having guys slap him before the game so he could just get mentally ready. Yeah, Different a, game. Yeah, absolutely. Basketball is not that game, but Grayson Allen, we will continue to see him involved in things like this because this is who he is. This is no Duke thing. Hey, don't, don't, don't blame it on Duke. Don't blame it on the Coach K. How is that going to be received as, as you go through the season? Is this the kind of thing where, where we talked about this with Lonzo Ball? You come in with any other storyline other than playing basketball and you're going to get targeted for it. Is but this people, the kind of thing he would get targeted for? Listen, I think the, the Lonzo thing was different. because I, I think some guys almost kind of felt bad that he had to f- have this distraction of his dad. But And, yeah, guys knew that there was going to be more eyeballs on those games, so they might have really tried to up their game. But people didn't have a grudge against Lonzo. I said it before. I'll say it again. There, you ask any NBA, any veteran NBA player, name five guys from the incoming class. Most know the number one pick. They mm-hmm. probably know Bagley. They, some of them might know Doncic. All of them Trey. know uh, Trey, Trey Young because he was a big yeah. story. All of them know him. And all the other guys I mentioned top five picks. All of them know who this guy is, what his rep is. And you said it exactly right from the way you set it up. You are what you do. In this world. You are not what you say you are. (laughs) You are not what you aspire to be. You are what you do. Your actions define you. And when you've had multiple reactions like you, the benefit of the doubt is gone. (laughs) Like, I I can't. The first altercation, like, yes, this is who he's going to be. He was an edgy player in college. He will be an edgy player in the pros. But how will other veteran players react? He's... It's not fair to have him in the same conversation as Lonzo Ball just because Lonzo Ball had a lot of eyeballs and optics on him. We saw LeBron James whisper something in Lonzo's ear, muffled his mouth so that people couldn't see. I don't see LeBron James doing that for him. All right? And the reason why, because a lot of these things that that Grayson does, you can get hurt on the basketball court. He could have hurt Trey's shoulder on that play. That's why he put his dead weight on him compared to falling back off him. It's the same thing that um, Kelly Olenek did to um, Kevin, to Kevin Love, Love. when he, he held his and elbow, then he ripped. yeah, and then and then he pulled it, which which led to Kevin Love having an injury. Yeah, Kevin Love missing NBA Finals, dislocated shoulder. If LeBron's first year with the Cavs, I just listen, and I'll go to the third rail here briefly because it's honestly how I feel, and I think it's a lot part of it. Great that you, we talk a lot about privilege in this country. Man, Grayson Allen, if he didn't look like Grayson Allen, would be called a thug up and down every television network from the day he left Duke. Or for the day he was, before he left Duke, pardon me, from the first time he started tripping guys, he shoved an assistant coach in college, a coach. He, he had breakdowns on the sideline. He's been in the league 10 minutes. And, and listen, I mean, I, it's going to take two months of him acting right for the redemption story to begin because that's how this always happens. That's why I caught a lot of flack from people because I was honest during the NCAA tournament. And if you guys remember, he had a buzzer beater attempt to go to the Final Four. And I told the public, listen, you can judge me for this if you want, 
But I was, and even though I had bet on Duke in that game, in my heart, in the moment, I was rooting against that shot going in. Because I knew how the story would be written, that Grayson Allen has overcome so much adversity. It ain't adversity if you do it to yourself. If you walk down the street and you get shot and you learn to walk again, that's an amazing story. If you shoot yourself and you recover from that, that's not overcoming adversity. That is overcoming self-inflicted wounds. He doesn't have to be this way. And the fans in Utah, they're going to be put in a really odd situation. They play great basketball in Utah. They have since Jerry Sloan took over that program. They have basketball disrespected. They play well on the offensive end. They play fundamental defense. And their fans, the product that they put out there, their fans have appreciated that. They have one of the huge home court advantages. People talk about, where don't you want to go during the regular season? Man, I don't want to go to Utah. Utah. Don't want to play no back-to-back. Don't want to go to Utah because of the brand of basketball. And I can understand what you're saying about Grayson and, and, and being in the tournament and as far as Duke. I like watching Utah for the style for which they play. I really like watching Donovan Mitchell, who was at the game last night. I'm not going to stop watching Utah because in this game, you cheer for jerseys and you cheer for, for, for brands on the, on, that have names. Right. And I'll be watching Donovan Mitchell cheering for him. I won't be cheering for Grayson Allen because it's not a brand of basketball that I enjoy seeing. So some would say that, or if there is the argument that he's trying to sort of beef up his reputation of being a tough guy or overcome whatever it is that he's not able to do on the court. He's a good basketball player. He doesn't need to do it. He's a phenomenal athlete. And, like, listen, by NBA standards, he's not an all-star caliber, like, obviously, right now. But he doesn't project out to be an all-star caliber player. But it does project out to have a long rotation career. Like, that's if you if you believe the college projections. If you remove this stuff. But I'm going to say one other thing about college and one of the patron saints of college basketball. If he can't get himself under control, you are going to start to wonder, fairly, whether or not Coach K did him a service or a disservice by enabling all of this. His whole time at Duke, remember he got suspended the one game, or indefinitely, but it was the one game. Like, they, he, he, if he can't control himself in summer league against one of the few guys he has a physical advantage over in Trey Young that he's going to play, how's he going to deal with a big seven-year NBA veteran backing him down in the post? How's he going to deal with the things he's going to have to deal with each and every night? I don't know the answer to that. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from First Things First or go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.